Well, hey guys, Curtis Parks here, and you're watching Worshipology. Today I'm down at Lake Anna, a beautiful lake about an hour and a half south of Washington, D.C., just reminded of God's beauty, His faithfulness, and His presence today. Uh, on the way down here, I had a phone conversation with a good friend who's going through a bit of a tough time. He actually said, I'm in a season where it feels like I'm in warfare. And it just reminded me of this amazing thing that we have with worship, right? Worship is warfare. There's times where we come together as a body of Christ with a song of praise, and it's more like a battle cry. We're so desperate for God's presence and to see his presence move in our lives. It reminded me of this amazing story in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. It's the story of Jehoshaphat's army. Uh, now, there's three nations that are coming up against Israel. Things don't look good for King Jehoshaphat, but he calls on the Lord. This is what it says uh, as he asks uh, people to come to a fast, all of Judah gathered together in verse 4, to ask for help from the Lord. Then you go over to verse 14. It says, The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mattaniah, a Levite. Now you remember the Levites were the tribe that was designated to take care of the tabernacle, to worship. They were basically the early church staff. And so it's very important that Jehaziel is of that line. And Jehaziel basically gets a word of the Lord. He has the spirit of the Lord come upon him. He gets this word, verse 17, I love this. It says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who's with you. It's amazing. They don't even need to fight the battle. Three nations coming to attack them. Go down to verse 20. He said, So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness. And, and, and Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Jerusalem, and all you inhabitants. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he consulted the people, he appointed those to sing to the Lord and praise the beauty of his holiness. So he appoints people to basically sing and praise the Lord. Verse 22, now when they began to sing praises, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. They didn't need to fight that battle. The Lord fought that battle. And as they praised God and worshiped him for who he is and what they know that he's done up to that point, because God had been faithful to the children of Israel, as they worshiped him and praised him, God fought the battle for him. And I just wanna encourage whoever's out there like watching this, if you are in a season of warfare where you feel like the world is against you, every attack of the enemy is against you, just remember this, uh, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And I believe one of the weapons that we actually use to go against the enemy is worship. Worship is warfare. So hopefully that encourages you today, worship leaders, as you lead your congregations in worship, Realize it is a battle for so many people out there in our churches. Worship is the weapon that we use to tell the enemy, you will not win this victory. And it's a, a message that we tell ourselves, this is a battle we don't need to fight. Amen. All right, well, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.